Okay, so number five is a 20-year-old female with a two centimeter neck mass. Good. Yeah. Very nice one. You're right. This is a, a great example. Try to get the slide clean here of schwannoma. And this one is particularly nice because you can really see the hypercellular Antony A areas, which sometimes become quite cellular. See, look at this, like almost fascicles here. So there are uh, times that you can get so much cellularity in the middle of a, of a schwannoma that people can sometimes get concerned for malignancy. Usually you don't have very many mitoses in schwannoma, although there's sometimes it can be exceptions. And here you can see right away the palisading, right? So the palisading in schwannoma, as we call, of course, varicae bodies. And what that means is that the, the nuclei are all piled up or lined up together on one side and on the other. And in the middle, there's this empty space that's just filled with pink collagen. And but so sometimes the varicae bodies will be really dramatic and nice, like in this case. But also other times the palisading in um, in schwannoma can be very subtle. And so recognizing subtle palisading is a really useful clue for schwannoma and other nerve sheath tumors and some other other tumors like spindle cell lipoma and things like that are not neural but tend to have palisading. So just recognizing sometimes that in a spindle cell lesion, if there are areas where the cells all seem to be kind of clustering together and then other areas they don't cluster as much. I mean, this is palisading. This is palisading in here. This is a little varicate body. Let me see if I can turn the light on. Yeah, it's still a little bright. Maybe I'll turn it down. Ah, that's better, okay. So that's the palisading and the, the varicate bodies in the Antony A areas. The other thing you see in schwannomas that's really useful and it's really good to learn all of the features, not just the palisading, because sometimes schwannomas don't have varicate bodies or, or have very subtle palisading. So that's when, I mean, the other clues can really help you, especially on a partial biopsy. Hyalinized sclerosis around vessels, really useful clue. Schwannomas tend to have this prominent reactive sclerotic kind of change around the vessel. See, like right here, even these small vessels. See how sclerosed that is? So the hyalinization of vessel walls, because see, if you just had this picture here, I mean, these spindle cells don't look particularly specific. I mean, the, to me, they look kind of neural, but I think a lot of people might look at that and wonder what it is. There's vague palisading in here, a little bit of lining up, a little bit of lining up of nuclei, but you and maybe are wondering if I'm making that up, right? And I bet a lot of people at home are like, yeah, right, that's not. But the palisading here is very, very subtle. It's certainly not a nice textbook VRK body. So sometimes getting spindled stuff like this with a hyalinized vessel, and then look over here, foamy cells. So in the Antony B areas, you get loose, uh, kind of foamy or frothy looking cells. You can get areas that are edematous. So the Antony B areas are the hypocellular areas. And you can see them out here. You can have mixoid change. You can have stuff that looks kind of like neurofibroma with like kind of the shredded carrot type of collagen sometimes you see like that. That looks a little bit like neurofibroma to me. Not exactly, but a little bit. So the, um, the Antony B areas are loose and kind of less specific looking. But uh, here at low power, you can nicely see both the hypercellular Antony A, the hypocellular Antony B, and also look at that nice thick capsule around the outside, a thick fibrous capsule. And that's because schwannomas arise out of the nerve and they grow and push outward from the nerve. And so what happens is the perineurium gets pushed along with it and it gets kind of fibrotic and sclerotic around the edge. But a lot of times if you do a perineurial marker like EMA or GLUT1 or Clodin1, you don't have to do this. But, but if, you, if you happen to do one on a schwannoma, you'll see a layer of perineurial cells in this outer capsule oftentimes, which is kind of evidence that it's arising from within a nerve and pushing it out. So, um, and then of course, schwannomas are made of Schwann cells, so they're going to be diffusely strongly positive for S100 protein and SOX10. Um, although most of the time you don't actually need stains, you just look at it. And once you know what a schwannoma looks like, it's usually an H&E diagnosis, although in, in a, a small biopsy or in an unusual case, immunostains can be really helpful to confirm. All right, so that's schwannoma. And oh, there's some a little bit more kind of a swirling varicae body areas down there. Oh, and sometimes they can have a lot of hemorrhage. So the, not only do the vessels get highlighted, but sometimes they leak and you can get a bunch of blood filled areas and hemosiderin in the middle of the tumor. And that can sometimes cause confusion. Um, make people think it's a vascular tumor or something.
So um, obviously S100 will solve those problems really easily.